Welcome, everyone. I'm incredibly happy to welcome Ila Becca and Louis Lemoine here to the, well, again, back because uh, uh, you've been here with us before. Uh, and uh, to, to Columbia University Graduate School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation. Uh, in 2006, Ila and Louis uh, founded the artistic and filmmaking pair Becca Lemoine. Uh, and two years later, at the peak of OMA's global impact, they said, the Maison Abodo in circulation through the cinematographic account of the daily experience of Guadalupe Acebo, Acedo, its housekeeper, with their 58-minute film, Colja's House Life. Uh, I think that it's impossible not to have this image in our heads. Actually, when we think of the Maison Abodo, probably that's the first image that comes to, to mind to all of us, right? Or at least to, to myself. And that's actually, uh, that means a lot at the time that uh, uh, Oma's architecture was seen as something that could not be uh, explained without the voice of Rem uh, behind. Basically, there was then a sudden, suddenly another voice that could uh, uh, speak of that architecture in a very different way. Uh, Kulha's House uh, Live was followed in 2010 by Inside, inside uh, Piano, uh, Gareth Vertigo, Christmas Mayer in 2011 by Pomerol, Herzog, and de Meron in 2014 by uh, 20, uh, 24 Earths uh, Surplace, La Madalena, L'Experience du Vid, uh, and, for, and 25 Bs in 2015, A Journey Around the Moon, The Infinite Happiness, Barbicani, and Spirit. I mean, all this to see how prolific uh, their work is. And uh, when I say these names, probably they all resound in our name, in our heads, as uh, uh, essays, uh, as films, that somehow uh, occupy a very important space in our imaginary and in our culture, in the way we, we live together. Uh, in, in, uh, I mean, I will pass the list because it's uh, endless and all of them quite relevant. In their work, it is impossible to see architectural devices as neutral. Buildings, cities, and landscapes become actors that complicate the life of others uh, that evolve in unexpected ways that have trajectories that have nothing to do with the intentions of those who designed them. Actually, it's so hilarious, the interview uh, with Rem that is totally surprised with, uh, with this and, uh, uh, and uh, improvises new theories to explain the house that reflect, uh, that already incorporate uh, uh, your film. Uh, actually, in films like How, uh, Cool House, House Life, or Barbican, buildings do their own things. For good and for bad, they have their own agency. Neither the autonomy of Rossi uh, nor the good will that their designers do him with, but problematic things that both complicate and en enable the life of others. Buildings, technologies, and infrastructures are not something that supports daily life, from the enacting of sound as an ultimate notion of inhabitants in the case of Moriyama-san, uh, one of my favorite, <laughs> I would say, uh, or to the love story of a sweet celebrity architect uh, with his car, a car designed for a world that no longer exists. In their film, Tokyo Ride, of course, that I'm sure you, you have in mind, the way technology unfolds in time becomes in itself a form of life. Ultimately, it is, impress it is my impression that their films are not explaining or documenting architecture. They respond to the capacity of films to enact life, societal complexity, political representation as both media and medium. But that's uh, precisely what architecture is or can be. Their work is part of the, I mean, we could now go to all the impressive list of distinctions. Uh, their work is a part of the collection of FRAC, uh, of the FRAC in Orleans, which means a lot for all of us who love architectural experimentation. Uh, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Fundazione Prada in Milan, the Centre, the Centre National des Arts Plastiques in Paris. We could go on with all these distinctions. They have the work it's been exhibited and, uh, and, and screened and awarded broadly. But overall, I would say that what makes the work uh, so impressive is that uh, if we had to uh, imagine or explain or somehow present what architecture is now, we could probably not do that without referring to the work of uh, uh, Ila Becca and Louis Lemoine. And that's probably much more than what uh, all these distinctions can speak of. Uh, and that's why I'm so happy that we can have this discussion with you today and that after uh, yesterday's screenings that uh, uh, allowed us to see a, a big part of your work. 
I'm also very happy uh, that uh, Mark Washuta is today responding and moderating the debate uh, uh, after the lecture, after your lecture. And I want to also, um, well, of course, we, we, those that are part of the GSAP community know that uh, Mark Washuta, but know Mark Washuta well, but I want to, to say uh, for those that are not part of our community how uh, uh, important the uh, work of Mark is uh, 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 reflect on how architecture operates as media and medium. And I think that's something that for us is where architects or architects that are, or people that are part of our, of our field, uh, it's very well known. But the reflections of um, uh, uh, Mark Wasuta on the work of, and the research on Buckminster Fuller, environmental communications, or uh, Rifat uh, Chadirhi, the architect and photographer, uh, it's uh, uh, really helped us to understand uh, that architecture operates as media, and in doing that, uh, engages in uh, the enact enacting of environmental, of the environment. And I think that, that it, this is something so unique to have at this point the possibility of having uh, your work and having this in conversation with Mark that we have to make the best of. So please join me in welcoming uh, Ilavec and Willemois. Thank you so much, Andres, for having us tonight and for this beautiful introduction. Do you hear us well, like this? Yeah? <clears throat> so, um, yeah, first of all, we're very pleased to be here. I'm back, actually, a few years after the first lecture. I don't remember, it was 2018, maybe, or 19, before COVID, let's say. Um, so tonight we'll try to give you a sort of overview of what we've been doing, Ila and myself, for many years now. And as a sort of introduction, we try to, uh, in a few words, to, to uh, explain what we do, but it's always difficult to give precise words because we keep voluntary a sort of blurry zone, or we, we, we like to, to remain outsiders of many disciplines. And, uh, but let's say that the work we've been doing for, for those, all those years are mostly at the crossroads of um, many of various disciplines, such as a non-fiction film, but also uh, video art. And we also, of course, engage with architecture and social sciences. But probably the, the simplest way to um, explain shortly what we do is to say that we are two observers using a video camera just to question the relation we collectively uh, develop with our surrounding space. And these on many scales, from the one of the domestic up to the one of the cities. But uh, um, let's say that the main effort we've been doing all these years is the one of uh, replacing people at the forefront of architectural representation. And this in order to, uh, to question architecture in its, uh, in its role, but also in its um, impact from a more anthropological point of view. And giving, and that explain also the title of this uh, lecture, giving also a central place or role to uh, the one of the experience, of the human experience on many levels, being uh, physical, psychological, emotional, and obviously social. So um, this, to start, is a sort of a global overview of the films we've been doing. They, we've made, I, I didn't count yesterday, but probably a little bit more than 30 films. But what's interesting, when I did the list, is that I noticed that they've been shot in um, more than 20 countries. And that's a, a very important aspect for us because we are constantly amazed to understand how Culture is a factor that shape and transform our understanding of space. So that's why we keep looking to make films in many different countries, let's say. But um, from the start, what animated our research was um, the idea to, to put into question uh, the way architecture was represented considering how fundamental the role of image is in our visual culture, but in particular way in the field of architecture. Because um, certainly, and more and more, we have to acknowledge that the image uh, is probably the very first vector of 
diffusion, communication, but also of how we build knowledge in architecture. And um, so, uh, because obviously we, we know mostly architects through th architecture through its reproduction, architecture not traveling around, we hardly go to see the buildings we study or we are interested by. And so that's why the vector of the image is so fundamental. And, and so it, it really carries a responsibility in the, in the way architecture is uh, not only thought, but taught and, and also built. So that's why I wanted to quote this uh, very long um, uh, text. Actually, it was uh, largely cut, I mentioned some cuts by Enrique Walker. It was actually um, a call for paper uh, in, uh, in the Revista di Architura. He said, we know the bunkers of the Atlantic coast from a series of photographs by Paul Virilio. We know the Tour Saint-Jacques in Paris from a night photograph by Brassai. We know the Reichstag in Berlin from the photographs of the fire that destroyed its dome in 1933, and from those of its wrapping by Christo and Jean-Claude in 1994. We know the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank building in Hong Kong by Norman Foster from a night photograph by Andreas Gursky. We know the Economist building in London by Alison and Peter Smithson from the sequence of meme artists at the start of the film Blow Up by Michelangelo Antonioni. We know the Malaparte house in Capri by Adalberto Libera from the shooting of Le Mépris by Jean-Luc Godard and the staging of the Odyssey by Fritz Lang in the same film. We know the house in Bordeaux by Rem Collas from the recording of its cleaning in the documentary by Ila Beck and Louise Lemoine. Uh, obviously, we have to uh, thank very much uh, Enrique Walker for adding us in this uh, amazing list. But uh, what's really interesting here is that um, in this text, he uh, really reduces a building or let's say a monument to only one or almost one single image. So the role of the image here plays such a, a role in also building the mythology around those uh, monuments, let's say. And something I wanted to um, uh, maybe uh, arrive to is that we, you obviously know this uh, famous um, quote from Winston Churchill, we shape our buildings and afterwards our buildings shape us. But what really interests us here is to understand that more than this first phase of, of influence to, uh, we, we get from the uh, surround, for surrounding environment in which we live, we also have to acknowledge in this idea I was following how much the way we represent our buildings could also influence the way we potentially build. Because we, we've been noticing how much in, in our experiences uh, in teaching in architecture schools, how much um, the mass of images that a student also carries within him uh, as a mass of references, but very much visual references, also will be the matter with which he will then build his imagination and potentially his future work. So that's why we, we are very interested in understanding how we could potentially changing also this imaginary through changing the image with which we represent architecture. So coming back to, to the films, uh, tonight we'll try to um, uh, to give you some, some keys of, of, of reading, or let's say to reveal a little bit of uh, um, conceptual key points or conceptual aspects that we've been working on for, for many years now. And, and tonight we'll go through uh, these five points, which um, we will connect some, some films with. So, Ila, we'll, we'll start with the first one. <coughs> I will, uh, I don't have to speak here, no? Do, can you hear me? Yes, I have to speak here? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> I'm free to, to move. Yes, I will uh, tell you a little story. It's the story of our beginning, how we started to make films, and why, and why we are keeping going now. It's a story of our very, very first film. It's a very small film. We like to talk about this little film. It's a, very, it's a micro film made by Free Picture, Free Photograph. 
And that is the story of the, really how we started to make films. And it was in a, in a airport in, in Paris, our lead. And we were talking, it was the beginning of our story, not only professional, but also sentimental. Because <laughs> our love story. Because it, this is a, the film that you have seen is a, the film, it's a filmography of love also, not only films. And so this was what at the beginning, real at the beginning, we were going to in, in Switzerland to present a film that I made before. And we were just in uh, waiting for the flight and we had this window in front. And so I saw this uh, reflection and I, I just took a, a picture. And uh, at that moment we were talking and uh, I was trying also to to make the things better, to, 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 how to say, to seduce. 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 <laughs> Louise. <laughs> and, uh, and so we were talking about architecture because I, I study architecture, but Louise did study, but she, she was really interested in architecture. So Louise asked me a very, how to say, a very strange, na a little bit naive uh, question that, uh, that it was this one. So uh, what is architecture for you? And uh, as, as I, I studied architecture, was, uh, for me, it was so complicated to answer to this question. So I was just thinking about what kind of uh, book can help me to, to, uh, to answer to this very complicated question. And the first book that uh, came up was, it doesn't want to come. Uh. Yes, maybe. Yeah, oh, yeah. this one. It was, a, a, it's a, it's a, it was a, a book for me very, very important during my study because it was the first time that I read something that was not related to walls, uh, roof and uh, beautiful facade, but it was related to how people uh, can experience a, an architecture, can live inside. And in this, in this particular uh, uh, <coughs> piece, Extra. he's talking about children uh, playing uh, in... Uh, on the stairs of a, of a church and saying that that's, that was the, the moment he understood also Rasmussen that this is the best way to, to, to understand what is a, an architecture. So, so I started talking with, uh, about this to, to Louise and also another that, uh, book that you, you know very well, The Spaces or Spaces. Uh, by George Perec, that is a, it's a kind of poetic uh, experience of uh, also of uh, architecture. And a, there was a quote in this book that for me was very important from during my study: is to live is to pass from one space to another while doing your very best not to bump yourself. And this is very important for me because uh, it's uh, it's like the, like the the book by Rasmussen. It's uh, try to understand that. And architecture is also uh, it's, it's, it's related to space, and, but uh, it's complicated to understand what is a space. But with, with these two books, I try to, to, to move from architecture to space. To, so, so starting to talk a little bit more about space. And that moment, something incredible happened in, in front of us. This, uh, this man started to, to clean the window. And so I took this picture without knowing why, because I just I, I always have a camera with me. So I took this picture, and at that moment, Louise said, because we were uh, interested in the, in the representation, we were going to show a film, so we uh, <coughs> make the images. And uh, Louise uh, asked me a very complicated, this, this is not not naive, <laughs> not naive at all, and was very complicated. Is, uh, so we are not talking about architecture; we are talking about space. So how to represent a space? Wow, so this was really complicated to, to answer to this question. And I thought about this book, that was a, another book very important during, that uh, every student in architecture knows very well, but uh, is Architectural Space. But this is not the, the title in Italian. The title in Italian is How to Look at uh, Architecture, where Zevi says that is, 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 in, is, is impossible to represent uh, space. You have to experience the space. So I, I, I try to, to say, yes, maybe it's complicated, but we can do it with uh, making films, because films, more than, uh, more, more than drawings or fo photographs, you, you can also represent the time. So you can add uh, the time to also to the three dimensions of the geometrical dimension of the architecture. And uh, we started at that moment, we started to, to say, wow, why? So she asked me, because I was making things before, she asked me, why you don't make, you, you have never thought to make a, a film about architecture? 
So what's something that I say always, I say, no, no way, I don't want to make films about architecture because I'm an architect, they want to make films. So making films about architecture was a double failure. So it's a failure, <laughs> like, it's a failure as an architect, they also a failure as a, 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 a filmmaker. filmmaker. So completely say, no, no way, never. I will never make a film about architecture. You see, what, what can love do? Because <laughs> I'm here now. <laughs> About film. After so film. I say, no, no, no way. But uh, she say, well, let's like do an exercise. What uh, if you if you could make a, a film about uh, uh, architecture? What do you want? We will li you would like to to see inside. So we started to make a list of things. Just waiting this play that doesn't uh, start. And so we we, we made really uh, this is this is the, the the real one, the original, and this is <laughs> the transcription. And we started to say, I, I want to see in a film. People, people, and people. I want to see people because I never seen people inside architecture during my study. No one. They, uh, I've seen only completely empty spaces, and uh, my time is going very well. So uh, other things, but all all the um, forbidden things that you never see in the, in a film about architecture. So, for example, bad weather, rain, uh, the humor, spontaneity, disorder, dirtiness. And uh, no architects, no owners, no expert, and no public relations. It was really a very violent, violent <laughs> list of things. It's a kind of, uh, we can say, uh, a manifesto. We, we, we wrote a, manif a manifesto. And we say, OK, if one day we can make a film. We want to make a film just on the, this uh, forbidden things topic, the forbidden topics of uh, the representation of architecture. Something happened at that moment, incredible, that the guy that was cleaning the, the, the window stayed a little bit like this. And so I took this picture. The guy went, went, uh, went, uh, away. went away and went away. And we, we, we stared at this picture and said, Wow, we had an illumination, an incredible illumination. It's like a, like a yeah, it's a, it, it, for us it was a kind of saint, it's the saint of maintenance, no? Uh, you, you have seen, we, we have seen this image and say, wow, but everything is there. So we just finished the list and say, but everything is there because this is what we never see in, uh, in the representation of architecture. So it's something that, Normally, the architecture is, is representing in a way that you never see this, you never see the people that maintain the architecture or even the, the, the people that are completely invisible. And we immediately thought about, uh, about what happened in, in the painter, painter for example, in, in, the, in the 17th century, in, in, the Holland, uh, Holland, uh, in Holland, for example, that when they started in the pension for the first time, they started to, to, to paint people, normal, uh, normal people. It was really a, very, uh, really a, a, a big revolution in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the paintings, in painting, painter, in the paintings. And we, we thought that maybe something like this we could, we could, could do, and not like kind of a revolution like this. But uh, we said, wow, well, maybe there's something to do also in, in, in architecture, in the representation of the architecture. And uh, with uh, some images like this in, in mind, we thought that we could maybe have the opportunity or the occasion to make a little film, just stay with someone like this, so it was this, because we had the opportunity to stay for two weeks with this incredible lady. That is uh, Guadalupe Acedo, that is uh, very known now. Uh, is this the kind of star of the. Uh, the uh, she lives in Hollywood. I, I always say this because, <laughs> because she's very famous now. But uh, and so we stayed and we made our first film that maybe, you know, that this is the beginning uh, of Can the we film. turn off the light?
So we made, we made this film in this house. This is a very famous, uh, famous house, but it, it's a, it was a kind of really uh, testing all our uh, list of topics. So we, we put it, uh, everything inside this film, like uh, something that you never seen before, the disorder, like a, a sort of a mess, rain, uh, yeah, even uh, a bird that it was plattered in, a, in, a, in, a, in the window. So, <laughs> and so the aging of the building uh, and the molds, that's, that's a beauty, very beautiful molds in, in, in this house. So. But what's, what something was very important for us was uh, really the people uh, working on the on behind the scene. Behind the scene, we also thought about this uh, very famous painting by Giuseppe Pellizza da Volpedo. And after that film, we made other films, and uh, I've, having these images in, in in mind, so we made other films of very famous uh, architecture. But where we wanted to just to stay with the people that use the space. And so this is uh, all other things that are related to this first period of, uh, of our work, what we were really interested in uh, pushing a little bit uh, the limits of the representation and integrating the, the position of the human being inside uh, the, 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 the image, the, the representation. But uh, uh, we, one time, we, we did it for many films. In one film, it was very important for us working with the, with the workers, for example, uh, like, like this, this guy. And it was uh, for a film that we made for Fondazione Prada, and we worked with, and uh, we stayed with the workers, and we tried to, 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 to pay an, a, a, an homage to the, the workers in the, So we continue with, uh, do you want to, mm -hmm. uh, okay. I'm, I'm a little bit stressed by my timer. I put a timer, before <laughs> so maybe I stop it. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, as Ira said, we, we started with a, with a rather radical and, and rather muscular kind of approach initially because we needed in a certain way to to uh, demolish or to deconstruct rules in representation. But afterwards, once that step was uh, passed, we, we could be a little bit smoother. So that's why now I would like to, to talk about emotions. And um, because we, we were also um, very interested by understanding when, when we were teaching in, in different places, how much the question of of the individual, uh, its emotions, uh, sen the place of, the, of his body, the feelings, all those questions which are e enormously personal were considered as so peripheric and so uh, secondary in the way architecture was approached. So we said, oh, why, why shouldn't we 
give such a, a, a direct focus to that once again to, to a little bit displace um, the way architecture is approached. So that's why we started to make a series of films and number of projects that were very much focusing on that question, on, on putting forward how space is able to, to produce emotion, to provoke and to, to, uh, to modify, uh, not only on an individual scale, but also collectively, um, moods, behaviors, and quality of, uh, of, of life. Uh, so, uh, to start with, we just wanted to, to uh, recount a little story because we also, before proposing uh, workshops or studios in, in architecture school, we, we make some tests at home with our children. <laughs> and so this is Maddalena, our daughter. She was uh, at the time five or six, if I remember. And, uh, and we said, okay, uh, Madalena, you have, we give you a week or a few days to uh, modify what you want in your bedroom and to see in order to a little bit awaken her on how uh, impactful furniture and the way you put things in, in, a, in a space can be a very impactful on, uh, on your well-being, on your moods, etc. And so uh, she, this was the initial uh, space, as it was before. And the first move she did was to place the bed uh, there so that she could have a direct view on the window. And then uh, the day after, she moved the bed, still with the idea of having a view, a little bit oblique like this, but still in the same kind of uh, direction. And then she moved this way, also with all the furniture, uh, but rather well ordered, let's say. The, the, the day after, she said, okay, let's a little bit uh, play in, uh, in, a very, in a little bit less obvious, but she liked it quite, she had to, uh, with the, it was not that uh, comfortable, but uh, she liked it like this. The day after, she said, okay, let's go <laughs> in a more chaotic way. But this one, she loved it because it really gave the idea of the, of the shack. You know, kids at that age, they love to hide and to create more intimate spaces. I, I, I moved all the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> and she, was, uh, she, she loved the, the, the game. And, and then she said, okay, let's go in a total disorder. So I, I will try this stayed not long. And, uh, and the day after we said, okay, Madalena, now you've tried many options. What would you keep if you had to keep uh, a place to put the bed? And she, strangely, she came back to the initial place. We were very surprised. We said, why, why do, you, do you keep that? Why do you want that? And she said, and that was the moment in which she really uh, became aware of something. She said, but this is where you enter. You enter, my parents enter from the door and that's where I can see when you, you, you get in and get out and so I, I have more connection with you. And so we, it was a real moment. We uh, also understood uh, this ritual of getting in and out in the evening when you read a story, etc. And that was very, it was very interesting for us. And said, then she said, okay, my, my desk, I want to put, place it here so that I can enjoy the view. But she kept the idea of the, of the shack, of all this furniture, to get this angle to, to hide. So this little exercise, and, and then afterwards she, she wanted to uh, move around the kitchen and the living room, and she, she keeps moving all the time, all things. But this was a very little exercise, but quite interesting for a kid, because I think we could actually start teaching or sensibilizing uh, small kids to, to architecture, or at least to... Uh, the space we have around in very small little um, games like this to let them become much more, uh, let's say, sensitive and aware of all those dynamics that, that are hidden behind. And so uh, I'm just mentioning this uh, nice quote from Gaston Bachelard. You probably know this French philosopher 
uh, and this interesting book of the Poetics of Space, comparing the house, of our, our house is our corner of the world, it is our first universe, a real cosmos in every sense of the world. It is an instrument with which to confront the cosmos. And we've been very, the, the question of the house or the world of, of the home, let's say, in English, in, in French, in Italian, we don't have these slip, uh, these two words which are very interesting because uh, home is loaded of all these uh, affective sense of it. And, and so that's why we've been uh, always fascinated to make films about houses and the way people um, uh, develop that attachment to space. And one film in particular I want to talk about is Moriyama San. So a film I think was shot, shown yesterday for probably some, for some of you. It's, it's a film that for us was really a turning point uh, because obviously when you make a film you, you learn a lot by making a film. You learn from um, all, all our films are made of encounters. Uh, intense uh, because we spend a lot of time uh, with, with these people and in particular way Morima-san was also an encounter with this man who was very special in many ways but also with the Japanese culture. So at, on both levels we were facing a totally new um, understanding of uh, relation to space but also to sensoriality to uh, an incredible, um, delicate uh, understanding of, uh, let's say, the idea of atmosphere, which is made out of a combination of so many things at a time, being the climate, the space, the furniture, the, co the combination of all this. And uh, so Moriyama, Mr. Moriyama, lives in this incredible house built by uh, Ryu Nishizawa, the, the duo, from the duo Sana. And this house is in the middle of uh, Tokyo. It's split in 10 little cubes, in uh, autonomous cubes. And Mr. Moriyama lives in five of them, four or five. And the others are rented. And you have a, a, a view from the upper one. And uh, we, was, uh, we followed so Mr. Moriyama during more or less one week. And we were really amazed how Mr. Moriyama develops. Uh, he, he completely changed life thanks to this building. He uh, spent his days, uh, he's a real amateur in the full sense and beautiful sense of the word. He, uh, this house he is, it has become his real cosmos and every day he chooses a book on the topic and uh, the author, etc., related to a specific space of the house for one light, for one wind, for one moment. So he keeps moving around the house. So he, he reads poetry in one angle, he reads philosophy in another, he reads, uh, I don't know, history of cinema uh, somewhere, he listens to noise music in the basement. So every corner, every aspect of the house has a specific atmosphere. And so this matches with a certain topic of culture or a certain genre, etc. And that was really uh, amazing for us. So I will show you a, sh a small extract if we can lower the light. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, this leads me to um, uh, a little bit come to the definition of what is an experience, because as, as, as we said many times, this is really a central question in, uh, in the way we make films, but also in what we are trying to put forward in, in the film itself. And uh, there is this very interesting quote of uh, Ioanni Palasma, that you probably the know of, the work of. Um, it says, experiencing a space is a dialogue, an exchange. As I enter a space, the space enters me and changes me. And um, so what's really interesting here is that uh, the notion of experience of a space is really an alchemy in the sense of a dynamic relation to, to an environment. You are not... Uh, there is no passivity. There is a, almost a chemical uh, alchemy with, which happens, and it's this process of metamorphosis in some ways. And another um, a very interesting sentence, which uh, one should, should think about, is by uh, Borges, the taste of the apple lies in the contact of the fruit with the palate and not in the fruit itself. And it's really, it's really marvelous and extremely um, said in such an efficient way to understand once again this idea of, of where happens uh, this idea of an experience, which is in the middle. It's, it's a sort of, um, yeah, it's once again, it's the idea of, of a dialogue among two entities. And let's say that this, this um, problematic or this topic of the emotion a space is able to provoke is a topic of a book we are currently working on. Uh, it's a book of conversations with these uh, various people we, you have here. Uh, it's not ended yet, so this is uh, as it looks today. And uh, let's say that um, the book tries to uh, gather stories and, uh, and intimate memories of some architects on the way that they sense and experience space on a very personal way and how their experience as even from their childhood is at play in their own uh, architectural research. So the book, uh, we, intend, we intend it to be a sort of invitation to sharpen uh, our sensorial perception, let's say, to space and also our awareness towards our sense of presence in relation to space and to time as well. Uh, yes, let's talk a little bit about the methodology of uh, our uh, making films. It's uh, structure of memory. Why structure of memory? Because uh, from the beginning, as uh, we, are, we didn't study uh, uh, cinema, we said, okay, uh, we are going to make uh, some films uh, about uh, the representation of space, but uh, let's try to do it as we, we really want, not like uh, you normally make a film. So no, normally making a film is a, it's a, it's a way that uh, started from uh, a script. So when, when you, you, you can imagine, you write everything about the film. After that, you find uh, you try to find the money, and you you film the film after that, and the film will be the same as the the script. So, in uh, even if it's a fiction or not fiction, it's a little bit like uh, architecture. You make a project, and at the end, your building will be like the project, or you hope so. <laughs> so we start. We say no. Uh, what we want to f to do is not a film. Is a is a sharing experience. And so uh, we started from the beginning thinking about how memory uh, works and uh, how we can use the same, uh, the, same, uh, the same structure of the memory. So not organizing everything like uh, in a rational way, but uh, start uh, inspiring like, uh, like uh, is the memory. So when uh, you, you know when you go inside a place, for example, for related to the special memory, 
you go out, when you make a tour in a, in a building, when you go out, you don't have uh, everything or, uh, or everything perfect in mind, but you have some little moment uh, very important for you. There are fragments like this. So it's a kind of big chaos like this, uh, that's the drawing that we made at the, at the same moment. And uh, so we have everything inside our, our mind. And the, 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 let, like we can say that the language creates this kind of uh, uh, order. So we wanted to, to keep this chaos, so working like, uh, like this beautiful uh, drawing was about Saul Steinberg. And we said from the beginning, okay, let's make film like this and not like, uh, the, like this uh, line that uh, came out from the mouth. So how to, how to, to keep this, this beautiful chaos that we have in mind? And it's a, it's a chaos that is really uh, constructed by, our, by our, our, our brain, because our brain works like this. It's a, it's a kind of a relationship that uh, you know, we have between our neurons that are made through the, something that is called synapses. And the, this uh, is relationship, like the, the beautiful uh, sentence by Borges, is uh, it, the, the memory is, is, is uh, created by the relation between the, the, the neurons. They are, they is not inside the neurons, but is, by, is created by only the, 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 the continuous connection that they have uh, between them. So we said, okay, let's try to, 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 to make a sort of script, graphic script, that is uh, inspired by this kind of system. So we, we took our list of topics and we put it, this list of topics uh, like this, and we, we, we tried to have this in mind when we made our film, first film, but uh, now starting from the, film, the film, first film, we made all the films like this, so that's the reason why we, we are talking about this, because st uh, still uh, today we make films like this. So we work much more on ourselves, preparing ourselves, and not writing what has to happen in front of the camera. So we prepare ourselves, we prepare as much as we can, so having everything inside, and at the end, we, 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 we went to, uh, to the, the place, so in this case it was uh, the first film, and we, we started to, to film without knowing why and, and how, but just filming, having in mind this kind of unconscious that we create with this graphic, uh, graphic script. At the end, we, the film is, uh, the for, for example, the first film we made, uh, Cola Sazo, that I talked, I talked uh, before, is made by, I don't know, 20, 24, 24 little fragments. And uh, it's not, for us, it was in, incredible at the beginning because we, we said, okay, now we have all these kind of uh, little uh, memories and these fragments, we call it fragments, but it's like little memories. Now we have to show the film. And uh, so we started to make, to create an order because uh, there's a chronological order in the film. But we, we can also watch this film like choosing the little fragment like this. And uh, every, 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 every time uh, we, we showed the film, we showed the film, at, at the end we said, no, we have to change the, the, the order. So we, we made, uh, I don't know how many different versions of this film. This is just the, the, the last one because we said, okay, now move on, let's make another film. <laughs> but uh, we have, I think we have uh, 100 versions of different order of this kind of uh, fragments. And uh, it started from that, uh, moment we st we we improve uh, for every film we improve the same uh, the same uh, graphic uh, script and so we improve also the topics so, so we are, we are, we have now many topics and everything we make now we, we change we change the this kind of uh, script this is Barbicania, for example I, I, this this is a film that we made in uh, in London. And, that, and if, you, if you have seen some of our films, everything is constructed, is built with a structure like this. So that's a, is the, because we, we like to say that the film at the end is the relation between all the little fragments that you have. It's not, you can watch a, a fragment and say, oh, this is uh, interesting or not. But at the end, when you watch all the fragments, you, there's a kind of order that it creates in, 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 in uh, what we would like to, to, uh, to happen is uh, that this kind of world is different in your mind, in the mind of everyone, because it's a kind of, 
it's, the, it's maybe the only way for us to, to share this kind of experience and also to be very, very open to what is happening when we, with, with them. This is a, the, 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 the methodology for the, the, let's say, for the form of the films, of the structure. For what is concerned about the, the time, we, we like to, to call it Iket Nunc, that is say here and now. And it's, uh, it's something for us very important because uh, from the beginning we said, okay, we, we make films, but we don't make films about, uh, about uh, a, a knowledge. We don't want to share, a no not, not share a knowledge, but we don't want to talk about something. We, don't, we want to stay in a place in that moment, in that precise moment, and just observing and uh, watching what is happening, and uh, and, uh, and uh, in a very personal way. So it's uh, us in that moment, and it's a very important uh, that that we we stay in that moment. This is very interesting in architecture because, uh, um, for, for example, we 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 try to to draw what is a, a timeline for an architecture. And uh, as you see, that's the part of the architects uh, is related. Is that there's an idea, a project, and a construction, and uh, at the, there's a moment, the birth, uh, we, uh, when the, the is, the, is uh, the opening of the building, and uh, and this this, uh, this curve that you see is the projection that the architect does for his building in the future. So the architect is. Uh, is thinking about the future. So uh, normally we call the architects to know what is, what will happen in the future. No, is the architect is the, is the genius of the future. So we, if you don't know what is going to happen in the city, for example, you call an architect, say he will tell you what is going to happen in, in the future, because the architect is, is working from the future. But there's a moment, that moment, that is the opening of the building, and that this curve like. That's fall is falling down because it's finished. That's uh, the, the future for the architect is finished, and uh, this is the moment where the 99 percent of the present, representation of the architecture is the, in that moment. It, it is the moment of the I would say even one day before the opening because <laughs> everything is perfect, fantastic, and uh, everything is beautiful, and uh, all the pictures that you, you we see in everywhere in all the Instagram or website everywhere are 99% taken uh, in, at that moment. So when the architecture is fantastic, it's, it's beautiful and the, and the architect is a genius. After that, after that day, we don't know anything about the architecture. We don't know anything about the life, the real life of the, of the building because the architect stopped his work and he stopped again in a new circle. So he goes back to, 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 to make a new projection in the future. So we lose, we lose the, the architects, and we have what we call the post-occupancy, so what uh, Rem calls uh, post-occupancy, and, 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 and we, don't, we don't know anything about this. So we wanted to, this is the future-oriented uh, uh, of the, the architecture, and <laughs> this is, go, go very fast, so I go very fast. So, we, we, when we think about this, we, we thought also about another very important book for us that is uh, Pestac de Le Corbusier de Philippe Boudon, where there was also some incredible images. When you see that uh, on the left side is the work of the architect, so this is the moment of the opening, and after the post-occupancy, this is the same house, huh? is the same house, some years uh, after. The Cité Fouges in, in, in Cité Pessac. Fouges in in Pessac. In and so this is what is happening to, to architecture uh, after, after the, the, the day of the opening. So we, we, we decided that we, our position will be in that moment, so the, the, what we call a feeling experience, will be in that precise moment, that one or that one. It's, uh, every, for everything we made, we, it's, it's a really uh, focus on the moment, and this is the moment where we, we, stay, we stay for every film. So it can be to 25 minutes to, to 15 hour, hours, like this one. That's, that's the last one, the last thing that we, we just finished. It's, uh, we, are, we are presenting now a little bit. And it's a film about uh, this uh, fantastic uh, architect, Thai architect, that is called uh, Boom Sam Prem Tada. And we stayed with him. We decided, we, we knew his, his uh, 
his story, his personal story, is an architect that is uh, deaf, completely deaf. You you know uh, you know very well. He's completely deaf, and uh, and he, he was born in Islam, in Islam in Bangkok, and it's incredible because he's making an architecture very strongly related to the senses. So he's uh, he's really working on the how to to perceive the spaces with the sound or even of with the with the vibration. It's a kind of uh, architecture of the vibration. This, this film was uh, as Tokyo Ride, who was shown yesterday. It's a film which also is linked to this idea of an encounter. We, we met on Zoom for this book project we are doing about uh, the emotion of space. And then we, we were amazed by meeting uh, Bunsen. And so we went to Bangkok to meet him and, and said, OK, let's do a film right now. And, uh, and so it's a film made in one day, which is an endless day, actually. It's starting very, very early uh, in the first hours of the day and ending very late at night. And so it's, uh, the film is made, and, and that's a process we've been uh, testing in many films, with what happens. Uh, so it can be a total disaster or it can become something interesting. But the idea is that through the energies and, 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 and pleasure of meeting, of being together, of this, uh, this idea of, um, of this alchemy of the experience, uh, to understand what, what could happen in, uh, in that uh, encounter. So the last uh, topic we wanted to, to evoke is the question of, of vulnerability. And it's a question we've been working on in many different ways to different aspects from the first film and on and on. But, and it contributes um, to this idea of, of, uh, of, let's say, this will we had from the start to deconstruct an ideal of, of perfection that design and architecture so, cherish so much. So we, we tend to believe that perfection in some ways is a, is a sort of fiction that we all suffer from, uh, but yet we keep adoring figures of superheroes and invincible persons. So that's why from, from, the, first, uh, from the start of our collaboration, we, we not only made the choice of grounding ourselves in the, this idea of the Iket Nunc, the here and now, so in this temporality of the, of the real present, but also looking at the fragilities of life in all its forms. And let's say that's uh, what moves us uh, the most. So the project I want to, to talk about is the, this one. It's a, a very large project, Homo Urbanus. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's still an ongoing project, actually. We've been working on for five years, I think, and it's composed of 11 films, each film being uh, of uh, approximately one hour. And it's been shot in 11 different cities, 
from uh, St. Petersburg to Seoul, to Naples, Tokyo, Bogota, Doha, Shanghai, Rabat, Venice, Bangkok, anyway. So cities are very, very different um, uh, scales, but also historical, cultural backgrounds, very different conditions each time. But I would say that more than uh, depicting the urban environment in a sort of frontal, straightforward way, uh, these films very much look at um, how the built environment uh, affects our lives, how it uh, shapes our behaviors, but also our conditions and attitudes, how it impacts our relation with space, but also with the others. Or well, let's say how the city frames, order and directs the way we live collectively in the space of the city. So the project at large tries to, to understand who this sort of uh, strange species we call the Homo Urbanus is, and also its miraculous capacity of adaptation to, uh, to the environment in which it lives, which can sometimes be rather complex or even hostile. So it's, a, let's say, a sort of huge uh, cinematographic fresco, which dives into the, the depths of the urban daily life, and let's say that we, we tend to put the Homo Urbanus, the uh, urban man, under the microscope, also to, to, to look at all the forces and silent rules we can, um, which are at play on the stage of the street. So the films are built around a constellation of, of topics. There are many, many topics, but one central one is the question of, of the urban body or how we physically uh, engage with the space of the city, uh, how we cope uh, with the fact of living in sometimes very densely populated cities. So all these dynamics uh, between uh, inhabitants, but also we are, uh, as an extension, we are very interested to understand this core à core relationship with the body of the city itself, so in, which produces this sort of daily struggle uh, this state of physical, constant physical effort. effort. Uh, another, obviously, talking about vulnerability, another point we've been looking at closely is um, how we grow old in, in city and how uh, the position of, of uh, aging bodies and this difficulty also to follow the rhythm of the city where usually, I mean, strength, efficiency, and, uh, and competitiveness are obviously leading values and energies. So we are also another topic we've been looking at, <laughs> we'd like to finish on this, um, is the question of uh, looking at how this blurry zone of private and public space, how it's, um, uh, how in various culture we relate to that. Um, and obviously, we see an image of, of Venice, so we've been extremely interested in understanding also how um, climate and in certain cases disaster, climatic disasters can also uh, largely affect uh, the way we live. So it's, um, as the project is so huge, we tend to present it more as a big video installation because it has uh, more this sort of experiential aspect to it. So we, we tend to present it, we, we call it a sort of cinematographic odyssey rather than a film because it's not one film or 11 film, but it's a sort of, um, it's a composition which is almost musical, let's say. Uh, so yeah, yeah, some views of various exhibitions we, where we tried many different settings. And let's say that this, this project has uh, obviously uh, tentacular, uh, it has been fed by many, many um, influences and, and references. But we've been extremely interested by, um, in the 1920s, you had this trend of urban symphonies, uh, which was where a pure expression of this moment of encounter between the newborn cinema and the newborn uh, metropolis, let's say, in this pure boom of industrialization. 
And this frame is from uh, obviously the most famous one uh, of Ziga Vertov, man with a movie camera, but let's say mostly in each of the big cities of that time, you had one, one film of that genre. So this is another shot from uh, Ziga Vertov. And, and so the, at that moment, it was a pure apology of the modern machines and, and, and the technical progress of so the films are uh, virtuoso, virtuoso in the editing as well. Um, but the editing was the form of silent language. And I, I'm just evoking this because our film, Homo Urbanus, uh, as opposed to many other films we made, made are a certain way, a sort of variation on silent movies because there are no more dialogues, no more exchange, verbal exchanges, let's say. But we try to use the, um, the language of the body as a form of expression, let's say, or the Homo Urbanus expresses himself by uh, the way the body uh, struggles in his uh, relation to, to the city. Another uh, film I just wanted to uh, quickly evoke because it has, it's quite meaningful here. Uh, it's the, uh, the short film in the street by uh, street photographers Ellen Levitt and James Agee because it, it was shot in 1948 in the um, Spanish area of Harlem and it's, it's really a gem, you can find it on YouTube. It's a marvelous film which is an extraordinary document of, of those areas, of, of that area. And, and kids play, obviously, a great role in, uh, in the film. And at the, at the beginning of the film, you have this marvelous presentation, which says, the streets of four quarters of great cities are, above all, a theater and a battleground. There, unaware and unnoticed, every human being is a poet, a masker, a warrior, a dancer. And in his innocent artistry, he projects against the tumult of the street, an image of human existence. And let's say that it said beautifully, uh, we are trying to, to achieve a little bit the same goal with the, with the project Homo Urbanos. Um, yeah, I have to, to, to close very soon. Just another figure which was extremely influential for our practice in, in the way we understand cinema, in this uh, idea of, uh, of uh, making a film as an experience which is unscripted and totally with, in the idea that a film is made uh, in the here and now with what you find and with this dynamic of exchange rather than imposing something you've been uh, thinking of and, and uh, ordering before. Jean Rouge was a key figure. He transformed totally the understanding of documentary cinema in the 60s. He's in a certain way the, um, the, the person who embodies La Nouvelle Vague uh, on the documentary side. And he was also famous for his ethnographic films. And he says ethnography has to be filmed before being theorized and not the other way around. So it was really this idea, and, and, and he, we really learned thanks to him that cinema can be a, an exploratory medium uh, and, not just, and, the, and that the film is not just a form given to a project that would be accurately uh, scripted beforehand, let's say. But filmmaking really can be a, a, an active form of, of thinking while doing, let's say. And just to end, we wanted to show you the, uh, the state of, the, of our um, uh, graphic script for, for the Omo Urbanus project, which uh, took a, a different shape that time, of also a, a, another level of complexity. And so this idea of unscripted cinema, which nevertheless can also uh, is not, it's not uh, in contradiction with the idea of, of mapping, as Ila said initially, we are interested in finding a way of, um, of keeping, uh, of, uh, of avoiding the chronological order that a script in a traditional uh, sense impose, and more to keep the dynamic of connections and, and a relation to, uh, in between topics in order to find 
a more um, mobile, a more fluid way of understanding uh, cinema, let's say. And that's how it also changes. But just to finish, I want to, to show you an extract of Homo Urbanus. It's, as I said, 11 hours. So to make a little excerpt, it's difficult. But we, we took a few short extracts from, uh, I think, three or four films. So can we turn off the light?
I think we'll stop here. Thank you so much. First, thank you uh, for a talk, incredibly brilliant and comprehensive, and thank you for showing, showing and sharing the work with us. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm catching my, my voice. Uh, I'm going to say a few things, give you guys a moment to relax <laughs> for a second after having been talking so uh, uh, epically about your work and your thinking and the, um, all of the sources that go into not only your films, but the diagrams of your brains that you've been showing us <laughs> repeatedly, um, all of that, which is amazing. But I also want to pick up a little bit about um, something that Andreas was talking about earlier, which is the relationship between your work and ideas of thinking about architecture and media. Uh, because it seems to me that just as a way of getting us going, that much of what your work does is make an argument about observation. And I know observation is a key term for you both. I know you've taught around it. Um, and it but it's an observation that helps us understand something, I think, which is that seeing in architecture has to be understood as a kind of observational system in and of itself, but, but seeing also has to be understood mediatically and representationally. So the, the kinds of seeing that you're constantly arguing for and enacting is a seeing that is mediatic, experiential, but also representational, and these are all tied together. But in your work, I feel like it's also seeing that is spatialized. It's a kind of spatial and visual chronicling and that, I think, is an extraordinary way of approaching our understanding of systems of representation, but also architecture in our cities. But here's what I want to talk about. It's a segment in one of your films. It's the Barbican film. Um, and I don't know if any of you know this film, but I, I'm, so I'm, I'm going to describe it briefly. And, and I feel like it should become known as the Barbican step sequence. That's how important <laughs> this, this moment is in the film. And this is what happens. Ila and Louise are filming an empty step in the Barbican. And a character comes into view and asks what they're doing, because admittedly a little strange. They're filming an empty step. And then he volunteers to occupy the steps because he claims he's an actor and a model. And so he does this incredible thing. He performs as an actor and a model on, this, on these steps. He climbs up and down, he, he acts as, as somebody climbing up and down these steps. Um, and then he performs like he's on a runway as a model. And so the, the incredible thing that happens is, and, and this is where I, maybe I want to start, is that something happens in that moment which I think happens often in your films, which is that the, the character who occupies those steps comes into view, and then suddenly the architecture recedes. And there's this incredibly complex oscillation between the people who are on screen versus the architecture. And it's not just to say that the architecture suddenly becomes unimportant. It's that in that moment, the, 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 the person, the 
the person you are observing now intercedes between the architecture as protagonist and becomes a protagonist himself or herself. And, and I feel like that oscillation is pretty constant in the films that I've seen at least, which is that they, they claim, or you claim, maybe you don't claim, that, that the film is somehow about architecture as building. And yet what happens at that moment when the character suddenly comes into view, suddenly building disappears and instead we have labor, we have forms of maintenance, we have the complex administration of boundaries, privacy, and personal territory. And so we suddenly realize that for a moment what you duped us into believing, which was that architecture was a building, suddenly we see as a much more complex set of relations. We see labor, we see maintenance. And, and I, that's why I feel like your films are a theory of architecture in that sense. They're, they're ostensibly about buildings, but what they're really about is the complex ways in which people help us understand the complex representational occupational financial economies out of which buildings emerge. And, and so my, my question was going to be that since the building is so important for staging that relationship, for us to understand what it means to occupy those spaces, what you would do if the buildings disappeared from your films? How much do we need the buildings to anchor your argument about architecture? How much do we need building as the subject at all? Um, and so then you end with the Homo <laughs> Urbanus, in which the building has now become something else. It's become more environmental. It's become broader. It's become, I'm not sure what it is. But, but so maybe, maybe I can just start there and prompt you to talk a little bit about what you think shifts, what that evolution is when it's no longer the building, it's the city. And, and, and if your films about buildings help us understand architecture as that complex interplay between forces, materials, occupants, and systems of labor and representation, what does Homo Urbanus help us understand about the city? What kind of media theory of the city is it? Um, why don't we start there? <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Um, Let's say that, uh, as we said initially, and, and probably that's why we, we, we are always in the difficulty of, uh, of uh, entering in that definition of architecture films. There, you know, there are many festivals about uh, films dealing with architecture, etc. And each time we take part, we understand how mm, different our films are. They are always on even if we take part in many, many festivals, but we, are, we feel very, very strange in the sense that we, we do not share probably the same aim in the sense that um, from the start we, we thought that, um, or at least our role, because it's useful to represent architecture and architect needs, uh, portfolio needs, images needs, probably very good shots, and that's not... Uh, that's not what we look for because it exists and people do much better than we do that, that aspect. But what we try to do is uh, to, as you said, to um, probably uh, give view of that complexity, that uh, stratification of complexity that, let's say, architecture enclose or embody that is to say, it's a, a, it's a space that is thought to uh, welcome uh, life, uh, our uh, human activities. And so it's uh, a place that is uh, completely um, made out of all the complexities of our uh, um, uh, social, political, economical, uh, psychological compositions, let's say. So that's why we were very much more interested in revealing all those complexities and what's behind, let's say, only uh, a nice looking building or let's say an aesthetical or technical aspect of, of space, let's say. And, and as you said, and probably it gives us a good idea, next, next film we could make 
we could talk about a building probably without seeing it at all. And that's um, we, actually it's what we do with the book now. We are much more, you know, making film is also recounting stories and uh, we need the human uh, brain, uh, memory, the emotions are the matter with which we make films and not only static uh, uh, compositions. So that's why we, it's, it's that, that we, that we look for and we, we yeah. And let's say that we felt that the reason why we changed also scale from the, let's say, the closed world of an architecture to the scale of the city is also that we felt a little bit um, too limited or we constantly were in, um, in relation to the question of um, the signature or the authorship of the architecture and, and this dialogue sometimes was a little bit uh, of um, we want we wanted to free ourselves from from the weight of that uh, authorship in a certain way and we wanted to to uh, enlarge the number of questions that uh, um, that the the city at large could um, could open up for us, so that's why it's it's uh, endless word. That's why we we could we couldn't finish this project or Morbanos. It's an ongoing. We keep you know, f filming because it's uh, it's so wide and actually it's an open question of how we live all together and uh, and what the kind of environment we've been building. Um, so it's it's more of an anthropological quest than uh, just. Uh, looking at how we build uh, structurally, let's say. Yeah, yeah, I think this, this, uh, this beautiful quote uh, by Palasma, that he says, uh, I enter a space and the space enters in me. I think it is interesting because uh, I don't think we need the architecture to talk about architecture. Because we are architecture in a sense, so we are. If you, you can, we can understand better if we talk about space more than architecture. Because when we talk about architecture, we talk about uh, something that uh, very is concrete that you can touch it. But if you talk about space, that is the essence of the architecture, you can you can understand better that uh, we are the space. So we are the space in the sense that uh, we exist in the relation that we have with the space. So we, we, in a sense, we can, we can uh, film the architecture or we, we can film people in the architecture is the same because the relation is there. But uh, the problem is when you film an architecture without, our, without, without, uh, without, without a, a body, because uh, I think a space doesn't exist if you don't have a body inside. If you, you are not inside, there's nothing inside the space itself, it doesn't exist. There's it, no, what is the fact? There's no taste of the peach without the body. But it's, um, I'm just going to keep pushing on this because I think it's so, the, the, the whole practice is so brilliantly organized around what it means to put a body in that space. And the last time I was here talking to somebody who made films about spaces, it was the artist Andrea Fraser. And she also filmed the Guggenheim Build by Owen. I'm sure you know her piece. And she also did these incredible projects around museums and what it meant to perform as a museum guide. And you probably know those pieces. She takes our attention away from the art to the building itself. And she blurs that boundary between what, it, what, are, what is it we're looking at in a museum? What is the apparatus that holds us within that space? What organizes our perception? And the building comes into play surprisingly. And I, and I feel like often your work does the opposite. You, the ruse is you're bringing us here to look at a building, but suddenly somebody's talking about affection. And then suddenly somebody's talking about the Barbican as a celebrity building and what that means. And suddenly there's a conversation about celebrity. And, and, and in your films, there's always this drifting away. Like you, the, the focus comes back to the building, but then it drifts away to something else, into an entirely different conversation. And, and there's something really captivating about that perpetual drifting away that I think is in a remarkable structure of your films. I, I don't really have a question there, just to say that it's just like, it's so clear as we, you watch more and more films that that's what's happening. And that body that's in that space, Mm. is the device that helps us drift away. It's yes. a body that has a reaction and affection, mm. yeah. 
But because, uh, and, and it's uh, clear also, we did a series of films. Before Omur Banus, we made um, a series of films on public squares, and one was on uh, the Place de la République in Paris. It's a very famous uh, big square in, in Paris. And, and the idea was to talk about this space, which is highly symbolical also in, in the political history of the city, because it's the place, the public space from which every um, demonstration starts, etc. And so considering, but the, the, during the entire film, which the title is 24 hours sur place, 24 hours on, on site, or I don't know how we translated it. The idea was never to evoke the square in itself as a topic, but we considered that if we met, it, it, it's a film shot during 24 hours on a row, and obviously the kind of people you meet at six in the morning, at 11, at two, at nine, or at four in the morning, it, they evolve constantly. It's not so. It's a sort of um, panorama of, of uh, public life. What happens there? The dynamics uh, of the city. It's a sort of social portrait of Paris on that day. Uh, and uh, and we we thought that we did didn't even need to evoke the square as a, as a at the forefront as a topic because it's constantly there. We would not uh, meet that person with this kind of openness or over availability, etc., if she was not sitting in the very center where it's more, it's calmer, etc. So we consider that the, um, let's say, um, the condition that a space establishes in terms of if we use a common word like atmosphere, a space has created a certain kind of, of mood, if you want, uh, which could be a negative, positive, or any, any kind in the wide range of moods that exist. And meeting that person there and uh, will definitely talk about what he um, feels, how he is um, receiving and uh, transformed by the space which is, where, where he stands. So we, we thought that indirectly, we very much talk about the place and, uh, and how it shapes the quality of our relationships. Mm. I'm just gonna ask one last question then open it up to people here. But because you've, you helped us understand quite a lot tonight that you're thinking around your work is about experience, the experience of the city, experience of architecture, and you're, you have theorists of experience. Um, so my question is like, what does it mean to experience behind the camera? Because that would not be the same experience as somebody in the space. You come in with a camera, and so you have a certain kind of clearly mediatized experience. And so how, how do you think of your own experience behind the camera and what that means? And, and I guess I might even push that a little further. The, the spaces that you gain access to, you gain access via the camera, so, or with the camera. So the first question is, do you gain access because of the camera? Does the camera give you access to spaces mm -hmm. that you wouldn't have otherwise? And, and, and so suddenly the camera is helping us not only see, but it's also helping us get into these spaces because so much of your work is around, is helping us see into spaces that we wouldn't see otherwise mm -hmm. and seeing things that we wouldn't see otherwise. And so it's not experience as someone might have it on the street. It's a very complexly orchestrated and organized experience that the camera makes possible and mediate simultaneously. Mm. So I'm, I'm sure you think about that all the time, but maybe help us understand a little bit of yeah. how you do that. Maybe I will, uh, then uh, he holds the camera, so he should answer. <laughs> but maybe just to, 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 to give a right answer like this, rather than uh, giving access to space, I think it uh, allows us to give access to mental space mm -hmm. rather than, than physical space, because it's not that, you, we are not a TV crew and we don't have like uh, the big producer calling saying, okay, my TV crew is coming, please open the doors. It doesn't work like this and we don't have like this kind of magic keys. But um, so it's more how the camera can also be an element of uh, transformation in the relationship you have with someone. But, uh, 
this is the yeah, magic key. Like, yeah, maybe, yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's, uh, the camera is just a tool. It's not, for us, it's not very important. We, we make films, but uh, we can have another tool. It's the same because the, the aim is not to make a film. It's the aim is to be ourselves first, even if we are able to share this experience for the others, so sensibilize to the experience of a space in the sense that uh, we are not educated for this. I think uh, that's the, why we, we show this little experiment we made with our daughter, because I, we think that uh, we need an education from when we are really, really very young, from child kids. We need an education about what is a, a relation to a space. And this is an, an, a, a good example because we really try with, that, with her and we understood that we 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 are we we know what is we listen to music we know what is a, watching a painting we know we know the power of a, the music to change your behavior or your state of mind but we don't know that the the, the space has an incredible power and uh, and even for for the students in architecture they I think that because we we teach us architecture I think they. They don't know that they have an incredible tool in, in, in the hand that is creating a space, that the space can create and change the behavior of the people and uh, also the, the emotion. You can create emotion stronger than music can do. And for, for us, it's normal when you are, you are a little bit sad or a little, uh, you put a music that you like and immediately you change. You change. Your behavior, your 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 emotion, and but you, we can do it with the, with the space, and uh, but we need to be educated to this because we uh, even for the music, for example, you need you need to be educated to 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 understand what is the power of uh, I don't know the contemporary music that is very or noise music like uh, this. You if you don't know anything about the noise music, you say ah it's a noise uh, shall I cut it. But if you know every every kind of music, you, you need to you need an education. Why we don't have an education to the, to to architecture, for example? Because we we live, as I said, we are architecture because we we spend all our life in architecture. So we don't need to talk about architecture because everyone is not something only for the architect. The architect is for everyone because everyone knows what is architecture because. You were you, you were born in architecture. You will die in architecture. So you you will spend all your life in, in architecture. So you you know how to do it. But we don't know how to recognize a good space or or a bad space. We do, we know that I'm not so good here, but I don't know because we are not educated. So I think uh, the, the the coming back to the, the 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 camera. The camera is just a tool. It could be a mirror or a microphone. It doesn't, it's not important. It's just to to try ourselves to be much more sens sensitive to the space and also talking with the others to, 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 to be aware that you are in, in this moment, here and now, you are in the space and you are, you are completely, your behavior is completely uh, influenced by the space that you are there, by the space and also by the, what you share with the other bodies. No, otherwise, when we finish now, we go out. This space doesn't exist because uh, there's no, there's no here now, and so we make films here now because we are interested in what is happening in that moment. So, when you ask it, uh, you you ask the, about our film, we we don't we don't need to talk. Uh, we we don't need to ask what is the architecture now because we are in that moment in that moment. So, what is everything is happening is happening thanks to the, this architecture. And so, so yes, we make films because we like films, but we can, uh, we can, we also now make books. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, great. I want to see the books. Um, I also, I have to disagree just for this reason that only very talented filmmakers would disavow how important the camera is and what they do with it because it's, um, as you said, it's like a kind of focusing mechanism. It allows you to understand what's happening in that relationship. It's a kind of chronicler, like I said earlier. It makes visual records, not just, and, and the visual is so important. All of the ways in which you translate characters into visual, how sound is picked up in relationship with the visual. And it, this is not, not, not to disagree with you, but just, to say that the that those mediatic translations also seem to be really important elements of the 
of what you're doing when you're composing these films. Those, fa those fragments that you rearrange a hundred times are not found fragments, they're fragments that you guys have produced by looking at something. So it's that relationship between looking and the record that comes from it and what you do with it that I think is part of the complex territory that you operate within and, and that um, we learn from to come back to the, to the pedagogical angle that you're imposing that we learn from when we look at your films. Uh, any questions from people here? Yes. There's a microphone coming. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, beautiful presentation and uh, your movies are really beautiful, really uh, touching the way you uh, give relevance to humanity. Uh, fundamental probably makes me think of uh, Team 10, the Smithsons, uh, the same shift they made, you are making it in the way you narrate movies. So my question is, how do you choose the architectures you represent? Do you ever receive requests from architects we would like to have our building shown in a more human way? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, let's say that um, we very rarely uh, collaborate with architects, it's very, very rare. Initially, we, we started with, a, let's say, the topic of research, which was this idea of, uh, we, this wish list of unrepresented topics in architecture. And so we initially in intentionally chose a series of buildings, very well known, uh, of these I very iconic buildings of uh, Pritzker Pri Prize winner architects because we needed to, uh, to work with buildings that already existed in, in your imaginary, uh, because we, we needed to, to have a before and after, you know, this comparison between, uh, let's say, what is the basis of representation and what actually, what field we could open in order to put in question in a critical way. So we needed uh, to, to start working on on, on these um, gigantic, let's say, uh, icons of a certain period. Um, yeah. And then slowly we, uh, we followed uh, much more uh, emotional choices, uh, which were based on encounters, essentially, even by total chance. We made a film, for instance, on a man. We wanted to show an extract tonight, but it was too much. Um, in uh, Tokyo, this is a, a man who builds his own house. The film is it's entitled Buto House because the, the man, his name is uh, Mr. Oka, Ke Keisuke Oka. Mm. And um, he was a former uh, dancer of Buto dance, which is uh, based on improvisation, uh, yeah, avant-garde dance uh, in Japan. And, um, and this man, uh, we, we met totally by chance. We were making photographs of, uh, of the um, uh, Co Kuwait ambassador. Kuwait ambassador by Kenzo Tange. Which, which, which is just in the same street. And we came across this very strange building uh, and we saw the door was open, etc. And we entered, and the film was made like this, actually. So we um, we just had the camera, and the and this man said we couldn't exchange. He was not speaking English. We couldn't say two words in Japanese. So, and and so we ended up making a film with him, with almost no dialogue. But uh, at the end of the day, his wife arrived, and uh, he she's spoke a bit of English, so, so we could exchange a few words afterwards. But so as this example explains that the film can be made by total chance because we were amazed by someone, or um, for instance, the very last film we shot uh, in September, and we're still working on it, is a film that we, um, it, it actually results from an art commission for an exhibition on, on uh, Herzog and de Baron. It will happen this uh, next summer. And, and this film was shot in a, the rehab center in Basel. They made 20 years ago. But because we made this film because the topic is of great interest for us, uh, the question of disability and how uh, someone um, f 
facing major crisis, physical crisis in his life, not only physical but also psychological, is regaining um, or trying to regain autonomy in his relation to space and mobility. So this this film was made on purpose because we were at that moment very much into question of uh, sensoriality and physical relation to space. So this proposal was completely in the panorama of our topics of, of research at the moment. So that's why we sometimes we agree for collaborations because they they connect and, and make echoes with what we're trying to, to look for. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say something because uh, yes, we 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 made uh, a lot of film by accident. So we we like this, but there's something interesting in the in this film that is called Butoh House. Luis was uh, mentioning about uh, is very interesting in the school of architecture uh, because this this man is building his house alone. So it's okay, but in, in concrete, so it's, uh, it's very complicated. But he's a uh, is a buto uh, buto dancer, and uh, so we spend the, the day with him and just watching him without talking any say any words because he doesn't talk uh, speak any uh, any words in English. So we were very silent during one the, the, the whole day, and that, but at the end we were lucky that uh, his wife went to the to the house and so she 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 could speak uh, a little bit of English. So we started speaking with them. And he was uh, incredibly, incredibly uh, gentle. Said, oh, "Let's uh, let's have a dinner together." So we we went at the end of the day. It's, it's very interesting this for a student architecture. So we went to the dinner, and when we went to the dinner, we we could finally talk with him. And so at the moment, we we talked with him and say we asked him if we could uh, uh, explain us the the project of the of the house. So we were expecting that he take a pen and uh, explain it. Uh, yes, my project is this. But at that moment, he said, OK, wait. And he went on, uh, just, uh, in, on, on the restaurant in a in place, and he started to dance. <laughs> and, the, and this is in the film. And the, uh, at the end of the film, he, start, he, he, he danced for three, three or four minutes. But uh, it's a beautiful dance. Uh, Buto House is a, it's a totally improvised dance. So you have a, to uh, huh? buto dance. the buto dance, yeah, sorry, the buto dance. The buto is a is a uh, traditional uh, dance, uh, Japanese da uh, dance, but where you improvise completely, totally. So he improvised a, a dance, w wonderful dance, and th at the end he said, "This is my house," <laughs> and that uh, we I, I think is something wonderful for a student in architecture because uh, in architecture we if during the five years I don't know when how long you stay here you. There's architects, uh, students here. You just learn about rules, no rules how to do things, but uh, you lose all the, your spontaneity, all the. So I dream about uh, an architecture. Not, not our students, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not here, but, uh, but uh, I, I study architecture, and during my five years of architecture, I just learn about the rules, the rules, and. Uh, and uh, things that you have to know that what you don't have, <laughs> what you cannot do, and so this is beautiful because I I, I, I thought it's a, be a beautiful exercise for the student architecture to 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 make a building like a dance, you no, know? and uh, and this is something we do in our workshop because we we, we give a lot of workshops in in some uh, university schools of architecture. And, and the last one was uh, we ask we ask the students to make a, a project a, a film in that way, but uh, related to to the, the experience that have related to the space and creating like a a, 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 um, <clears throat> a recipe and uh, a, a building starting from a recipe, a building starting from a dance. So something that is really related for uh, from uh, from your sensation. For your what your your feelings, no, what you feel. That's I don't know why I'm talking about this, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's beautiful to say this in the school of architecture. No, it's someone that is building his house like a dance. Yeah. What you what the dean thinks about this? <laughs> uh, hi. Um, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Um, for me personally, I think your work has been really important um, in allowing me to kind of decompress the seriousness of architecture um, and really find 
a bit of human agency in, in all of our spaces that we inhabit. And I think for me, a moment that really embodies this, this idea that maybe architecture isn't, isn't is anything but is a set of material medias that kind of allow interaction between ourselves and between us and the environment is uh, this moment in Tokyo Ride where uh, Ryu insists that the car windows stay open um, so, so that the windows don't fog up. And in a way, it's really interesting. The car becomes a home where he's protecting you from your own breath and he's protecting you um, from the material conditions of the car through like this engagement with nature. Um, and, and, and like I, that, that moment has stuck with me personally. Um, and, and I think in, in going back to like what you ended with, uh, talking about school, talking about um, maybe how video can, can kind of change the way that we see architecture and understand our own agency. Um, how, how do you see video, um, the future of video in, in that first half of, of architecture before occupancy, kind of changing the way that um, people are empowered to design um, and I guess what roles that video can have in becoming more active in our design process. <laughs> Thank you for the comments and for the question. But um, as, as you probably understood, we have a very intense commitment in the present time. So talking about uh, this period of uh, imagining a future is not so much our cup of tea. But um, Oh, my cup of tea. <laughs> but, uh, I'm, an, I'm, an I'm an architect. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an expert of future. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, it's, I think that I, I, we don't have any uh, like rec magical recipe where there are many ways uh, of using video. We, we, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we talk a little bit about, uh, about this in, in, the, in, in, in the lecture. We think, I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that we, that the architecture that a student will make in the future of, of also thinking about the architecture he can make on the, on even the city, the world that we are creating in the future is related on the, what we know, what we have in mind, on the references that we have in mind. We, we talk about this and uh, for us it is extremely important because we started with this, because uh, I studied architecture, but uh, when I was studying, in, I studied architecture in Venice, and when, uh, during my study, I always had in mind this incredible uh, separation between what uh, was architecture in the School of Architecture and what I found outside the School of Architecture. And I, I never found a relationship between them. So I, I, I studied uh, architecture and yeah, the school. I had many references in my mind, but uh, I went out and say, where are they? What is this city? What is, uh, why, why I'm living in, in this kind of uh, city if the architecture I'm studying about it is not there? So uh, is, I think what we are doing, for, we're trying to do from the beginning is uh, try to, to create I don't, even, I don't say a balance because it's impossible, but uh, try to give a an, an, an different uh, references to, to not only to the student of architecture, but we are very interested in the student architecture because I think we can do a lot with the student architect in arch architecture more than with an architect because we, you, have, you still have the time to dream about something different. And you, when you will finish your school, you, you will not have time to, to dream. You are just to work and create your own architecture. You will have a lot of things in mind. But during the study of architecture, we can uh, bring some different example to try to put a little virus in, in this uh, beautiful image that uh, all the media creates about archi architecture. If you, if you see everywhere, we, we see everywhere, uh, everywhere, this kind of beautiful buildings, uh, empty buildings, uh, everything is beautiful, the light is beautiful, everything is beautiful, everything is, a, it's a completely fake world. So can you imagine that, can you imagine living in that, in, in, the, in that world? The world that they is representing 
what, what the media represent about architecture is creating a total fake world where the, it, no one is living in that place. No one is living. When you go out even here, you see completely another world, no? Mm -hmm. So why, we, we, why you, a uh, student of architecture, you have in mind this world that doesn't exist and you are, you are the, ex, the expert of creating the world of tomorrow, of the future. You are the expert of the future, but in mind you have a, a completely fake world that doesn't exist. This is completely absurd, no? I don't say that we, we need to see the reality, but we, we need to see something else. And something else for us from the beginning was a, a more humanity, no? Mm -hmm. you, you, have to, you, you will create spaces for human beings to improve their life. And what you have in mind is the references of about uh, something, de design, some, uh, an object with a beautiful light and uh, no, no, everything is perfect. There's no perfection outside. So open your eyes. It's not uh, we 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 maybe we we always say we try to create a little bridge bridge behind behind two worlds that are not related. So maybe we can do a lot with this. We can do we can we can show that people are like in Homo Urbanus, people outside are struggling with the, with the city. It's not so beautiful like you think. That's why maybe just to answer the initial question, uh, we at the AA in London, we've been running this uh, unit uh, that we entitle uh, Laboratory for Sensitive Observers. And, and this, this was the idea not to make them make films about their building, their projects, etc., but to bring them out of the school and to start through filming, through exercises of observation in very close uh, and connected way to our project Homo Urbanus to develop a little more maybe uh, awareness and, and human sensitivity. So the idea was really to, um, let's say it was a pre-work, like not using in a straightforward way the video to document a project, but maybe to use the video uh, um, and the process of filmmaking, of, of observation, of taking time, of meeting person, of the difficulty also it implies, to uh, become a little bit more sensitive to, uh, um, to how people from other, totally other worlds than yours, uh, confront with the issues of uh, any kind of issues in the city. So we had students, one student, for instance, made an extraordinary project with a homeless in London, he spent months living with him almost on a daily basis to understand how he made use of the city to create a sort of new form of uh, uh, to invent a survival system using uh, many places in the city could use for free, etc. So it, it opened the world for this student. And now and there's, a, there's, a, I would say, uh, there's a very beautiful moment in the film that this student made with the homeless. Is the homeless himself that is walking in London, and uh, at the moment he just stops in front of a, a, a big rendering by a new building that they are building. So this beautiful rendering of where everyone, everybody is so very happy, uh, very Smiling. wealthy, whatever. And, and this homeless says at the camera, the guy, the student, he say, where, where, the, where are the homeless? What is this world about? What this is not, this is not the, <laughs> the, the, world the real I live world. In, There's you know? no homeless in this rendering. And you, I've, have you seen a homeless in a rendering? Never, no, because this is the, 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 the world without homeless, no? We, so mm -hmm. what you have in mind is creating a world without, without homeless, no? But uh, when you, you, you see he spent five months uh, with the homeless, he say, yeah, well, that, that's the problem. That might be a good moment for us to end the day. I just, just to do that, I think all of your comments about what, you're observing in the city and in architecture as a kind of provocation to how to think design and to think what we do and to think our future is, I think, incredibly legible in your work. And just to tie two projects together, in the Bordeaux film, the hilarious encounter with where the 
rain is leaching into the building and dripping and they're discovering that it's coming through some kind of ventilation duct to the incredibly potent images you showed us toward the end of cities being inundated. Like there's clearly there's an idea of vulnerability, not just of architecture being improperly detailed and what that means, but also of our, you know, our environments being <laughs> improperly managed. And so, so I, I think there is an incredibly rich spatial, political, environmental agenda within those forms of documentation and observation that your work represents so brilliantly. So thank you again for the talk and for okay. talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.